Hello. Welcome to the studio. Today, we are talking about the biggest obstacles for guitarists in 2019. Oh, wait there one second. Okay, sorry, back to the video. Guaranteed, about 80% of the people have just clicked off this video. So congratulations if you're still watching, you're in for a bit of a treat. So I teach in schools as a peripatetic teacher, or... Peri. So this week was back to school week. Uh, after the summer holidays, it's nice to catch up with a lot of my students um, that I haven't seen for a little while. Really enjoy meeting new students as well. One thing that crops up uh, quite a lot is the issue of practicing which I've addressed in a previous video. There's a few big obstacles that I see, for, especially for kids learning these days, which I'm going to address in this video today. I'm also going to go into a few tips on how to practice and how to get over these obstacles. Obstacle number one, distractions. I'm sure I've addressed this before, but when I was learning, when I was younger, there was nowhere near the distractions that we've got now. I would close my bedroom door, it would just be me, my guitar, and my PlayStation, and that was it. So that was my life when I was learning. Now, kids are constantly connected to all their friends, they have the internet in their pocket, and there's always something going on for them to be distracted. There's always something more important to do than sit in playing the guitar, especially in the beginning. It takes a certain kind of person to get over that and be really quite determined. And some people are just prone to being distracted. Some of those distractions have a big effect on brain chemistry. I listened to a podcast recently by a friend of mine. The podcast is called Heavy Mental. It's really interesting. This particular one that I listened to was to do with gaming and how it affects people's mental health. Now, I'm not a neurologist, but I know that your brain releases certain chemicals when you achieve something. When you achieve whatever goal that you set out to do, your brain releases a chemical that says, yes, let's do it again. Now this can be for anything from going to the gym. Standing up on a surfboard for the first time, winning a game of rug bowser. Now these chemicals, these endorphins, uh, serotonin, oxytocin and dopamine, that's your body's way of rewarding something beneficial to you. Now the problem is, your brain doesn't know the difference between real life and a game. It treats every achieved goal as a success. So when you get a kill on Fortnite, you get a hit of feel-good chemicals. When you clear out all the piggies on Angry Birds, you get a hit of feel-good chemicals. Now those games and those activities are designed to give you fast release of endorphins to make you want to play more and more and more and more and more and more and more. Now eventually you will get conditioned to get bored of anything that doesn't give you that quick release of endorphins fast enough. I may be wrong but these are just my experiences but I have noticed a growing trend of kids not wanting to work hard at things unless it's gaming or anything that makes them feel good quick. Now I'm not against gaming at all. I do a lot of gaming. I used to do a lot more until I realized that the hours and hours and hours that I would put into something didn't actually progress me forward in the real world. Just because I'm ranked number one on a Counter-Strike server for pump kills, it doesn't actually make my life any better at all. <laughs> so after I came to that realization, I decided to spend more time developing myself and my skills to make me a better person. And that ultimately led me to a career in music. So here are a few things to think about to get over these obstacles in 2019. Now there are a few things you can do which help release these chemicals. Give yourself a long-term ultimate goal and think about how it's going to feel when you get to that point. Doesn't matter how difficult it is, whatever it is, where it could be playing your favorite song, it could be singing on stage. And with positive visualization, which I've spoken about before, just Think about how it's going to feel and how much better you're going to be when you get to that point. For me, my first big goal and my first big sense of achievement, I listened to the album 
Surfing with the Alien by Joe Satriani and it got to the point where Midnight came on and it completely blew my mind. I had no idea, it didn't even sound like a guitar. I didn't, I thought it was more than one guitar and then someone told me that it was just him playing on his own. I had no idea how to do it and I think this was before YouTube so you couldn't just look it up. And I thought when I get to that point that I would be happy and I would be content and that was like the height of my guitar playing abilities and that was like absolutely stellar. I got to that point and then I wanted more and then it was something else. I think it might have been Overture by Dream Theater or it could have been any number of things. <laughs> and it's just progressed from there. But you need to give yourself that first initial big goal, that big step that you're aiming for. Now the next thing you want to do is make a list of smaller objectives that lead to that goal. Now this could be learning four chords. It could be learning to change between each chord. It could be strumming a particular pattern. It could be achieving all that at a certain speed. And you want to use a metronome to measure your speed so that every day and every week you'll be going up and up and up. The speed will be getting closer to what you want to aim for and you can measure it. Every time you tick that off, it will be a release of endorphins. You will feel like you've achieved something and you have, you will have achieved something. But sometimes when you don't acknowledge those little achievements, they don't actually feel like you're getting anywhere. A lot of the time I see people on a weekly basis who think they haven't gone anywhere at all. They just do the same thing over and over again. But I notice a difference. I do notice a big difference when they come back to me after a week and they think, oh, I, I've been practicing, but it's not working. But then they play something for me. It's more settled in, it's more solid rhythm wise. They can play it maybe 20 beats per minute faster than they could last week, but they don't know because they haven't measured it. And it is important. The other thing, tell someone about your progress and tell someone about what you're learning. It could be a friend, it could be a member of the family. If you know someone else that plays, ask them to listen to you play. Ask them what they think of whatever you're working on. Do the same for them. Give them feedback on how they play in and vocalize what you are learning. A big part of having one-to-one -one lessons, the reason why some people get on bed to speak into someone face-to-face, -face, is because they are vocalizing it. As a teacher, I'll ask someone, what have they been working on this week? How, how well has it been going? What have you achieved? Have you enjoyed it? Those are all questions that you don't get asked when no one else is involved with your progress. Get someone else involved and vocalize it, it'll help. Now those are ways to get endorphins and serotonin and oxytocin and dopamine to release into your brain to make you want to practice more and more. Sometimes it's not about that as much. Sometimes it's just uh, a case of making it fit in with your lifestyle. Make your guitar accessible wherever you are. You spend most of your time. So if you're younger and you do a lot of gaming, whatever your Xbox is, wherever your PlayStation is, put your guitar near there. Whenever you're waiting for the next round, if you've died or you're waiting for a loading screen, just pick it up, play something. If you spend most of your time downstairs watching TV, keep it downstairs on a stand. Don't put it in its case because it'll feel like a chore to get it out every time. Make it accessible, make it easy to grab, just pick it up, just strum along. Before you know it, you'll be playing in the adverts of stuff and, and you don't realise that you're practising. It's a different type of practising because your brain isn't focused on it, but it's good for your hand, it's good for muscle memory. If you just switch off and just play, just hold down the chord, squash it down, watch TV, switch off, watch YouTube, watch some of my videos, and you won't realise that you've practised as much as you have. Treat practice like playtime. People say they play guitar, but you want to, you do want to just play, make it fun. So mess around with it, make a quirky, weird song about your friend's stupid new haircut. Your hair was so beautiful, but now you look like a garbage monster puking up. Think of a bear creeping round eating a donut. How would that sound? Imagine a lonely toad having a shower and play what that would sound like.
play something that sounds like a really heavy midwife. What I'm trying to say is, make it fun and eventually it won't feel like practice at all. And on that note, if you want to like the video, that would be fantastic. If you want to subscribe, I'll be yours forever. I'm going to leave you with this tasty nugget of information. Thank you.